Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, May 14th, 2020. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and this is episode 229. Now because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, click CC for English subs. I create them myself. In this episode, Ancient Detective and some stars speak out against extreme paparazzi and fan behavior. But first, a list of upcoming drama slated to premiere on Yuku in May and June. So I'm not sure when this brochure came out, but I found it on one of the blogs that I follow on Weibo. Let's see what the first page says. The heading up top says Yuku Hot Drama Recommendations Second Quarter. Now second quarter means April to June. Seeing as we're almost halfway into May already, we can deduce that these dramas will come out sometime in the next six weeks. Or at least they're slated to. Whether or not they actually will is another story. No official premiere dates for these dramas yet, but let's just see what's in store. The first one there is The Twin Flower Legend starring Yu Xiaotong and Kenny Kwan. The second one is Love Advanced Customization starring Del Raba and Johnny Huang. I spoke about The Twin Flower Legend in my last episode. This is the only drama in this brochure to officially announce a premiere date, May 15th, so it should be up tomorrow. Now I've heard rumors of Love Advanced Customization premiering soon. My drama list has it as premiering on the 18th, I've read elsewhere that it's premiering on the 17th. But at the moment, there's no official announcement on their Weibo page yet, so hang tight, I'll keep you guys updated on this. Then on the next page, there's Count Your Lucky Stars starring Jerry Yan and Shi Yue. And then The Winner Is Love starring Leo Luo and Yuki Chen. Love Advanced Customization Count Your Lucky Stars and The Winner Is Love, three dramas that feature big stars and have been highly anticipated for a while. But probably the most highly anticipated drama of them all is on the next page. The Wolf starring Darren Wang and Li Qing. The other drama on this page is Broker starring Victoria Song and Leo Luo. That's another drama that fans are looking forward to. On the next page, we have White War, starring Hong Kong actors Bosco Wong and Ron Ng. It tells a story about fighting the war on drugs. The second drama there is God of Lost Fantasy with Peter Sheng and Olivia Wong. I remember speaking about this drama a long time ago. And the last drama there is Inside Man, starring Zhang Yishan and Pan Yueming. On the next page, we have My Dear Destiny, starring Zhang Sifan and Hu Yixuan, and Only You, starring Tim Pei and Li Nuo. On the last page, we have First Romance, starring Riley Wang and Wan Peng, and Youth Prescribed, starring Sung Nanxi and Ma Haodong. So a good, diverse list of modern and costume dramas. No Republican era ones, though. Now, I wouldn't fault anyone for thinking it's a bit too good to be true for all these dramas to premiere within the next six weeks. Even if Yuku plans to roll them all out, they still have to get by the censorship board, which is a feat in and of itself. I'm not asking for much. Out of the 12 dramas, and I'm not including the Twin Flower Legend because it's already officially premiering, but out of the 12, I just want five. Love Advanced Customization, Count Your Lucky Stars, and the winner is Love, The Wolf, and Broker. 5 out of 12, that's not too much to ask for, is it? The other concern for international fans is that Yuku doesn't provide English subs. These dramas will have to air on YouTube or Viki or some other platform for it to have English subs, but I'm sure that will get taken care of when the time comes. Let's just see these dramas hit the air. Ancient Detective is a costume drama starring Tim Yu and Wan Yan Yang. It ran from April 8th to April 29th. The drama follows an amnesiac detective who seeks his father's killer. Along the way, he finds a love interest and a good friend who helps him solve the mysterious case. Tim Yu's role in Ancient Detective is his first starring one. He had a couple of supporting roles in dramas like Hero's Dream and The Way We Were before this. Wan Yan Yang starred in Modern Couples before this. This is his second starring role. The reason I'm talking about this drama is because some of you mentioned it in the comment section of previous videos, and thank you for that. I recently had a chance to check out the first couple of episodes, and it looks great. It's intriguing, and it involves hopping zombies. Ancient Detective is available on YouTube and Viki. A Love Never Lost is an upcoming drama, and on May 11th, they announced their main leads of Li Xian and Jesse Lee. 
The drama takes place just after the first Sino-Japanese War at the turn of the 19th century. It was a period which saw the Boxer Rebellion, an anti-imperialist uprising. Li Xian stars as an ambitious and educated noble who's recently returned from Japan. Jesse Lee stars as a forward-thinking noble who's trying to escape an arranged marriage. The pair end up joining the uprising after being disillusioned with the current ruling class. Li Xian burst onto the scene with a starring role in Tianjin Mystic in 2017. His popularity continued to surge with Go Go Squid and most recently with Sword Dynasty. This will be Jesse Lee's first starring role in a drama. A Love Never Lost will begin filming shortly. And speaking of Li Xian, he's one of the stars to recently speak out against extreme paparazzi and fan behavior. On May 13th, Li Xian posted on his Weibo feed to recount an incident he experienced. He said he was walking in the park one afternoon when he discovered he was being photographed by a reporter from a certain media outlet. Li Xian said this was a private activity and he didn't want to be photographed. When he got home, however, he found several people squatting in his neighborhood, shouting his name and taking his picture and continuing to do so despite him telling them to stop. He ends the post by saying respect is mutual and reminding everyone to wear masks. Yang Mi also made headlines in a paparazzi incident on the set of Pearl Eclipse. There she is in the purple top and short shorts getting out of the cast van. You can already see people taking pictures from behind her. Then in front of her as well as she hurried into the building. And not just from the back and the front, but from the bottom as well. These pictures taken from the bottom of the stairs later floated online and led to accusations of the photographer taking disgusting upskirt photos. Personally, I don't think it was the photographer's intention, it was just where he or she was situated. Taking upskirt photos is a criminal offense, the photographer would have to be really dumb to do so. In any case, fortunately for Yang Mi, she was well covered and not wearing a skirt anyway. The incident prompted the Pearl Eclipse production team to release a statement saying that they will strengthen security to prevent this kind of thing again. I want to point out something that just seems so obvious to me and maybe some of you are thinking it as well. In all these pictures, we don't get to see her face, it's all covered up. It looks like the shape of Yang Mi, but is that even her? Or is that a decoy? And the real McCoy is entering the building from a different entrance. I wouldn't be surprised. And if it was indeed a decoy, well played. Anyway, two other celebrities spoke out against paparazzi behavior. On May 9th, Wang Yipo posted a message of frustration on his Weibo account. He said, I've worked hard, can't I even nap in my car? My staff are standing in front of your car and you dare to drive forward? For a while now, strangers have been knocking on my hotel door in the middle of the night. I've had a tracking device installed on my car. I get followed everywhere. I can't do it anymore. On May 10th, Kerry Wang's studio posted a message on their Weibo account. They said that some irrational friends have been chasing and following cars and gathering at hotel lobbies and hallways where Kerry Wang is staying. Such behavior not only affects Kerry Wang's work and life, it also seriously interferes with public order. So here's the thing about paparazzi and fans taking pictures of celebrities, from my understanding. In China, like in many other places in the world, if it's in a public venue like a park, they can legally do it. If it's in a studio or hotel, they can take pictures from outside, but if they go inside, staff can tell them to leave because it's considered a private establishment. So that's the legal aspect. As to whether or not they should take those pictures is a bit of a judgment call. I agree with Li Xian that respect is mutual. Celebrities and reporters have a symbiotic relationship, so it's in everyone's interest to keep things warm and friendly. I think celebs should expect to some degree that they will be followed and hounded for pictures when they're in public. But what they shouldn't have to put up with is unreasonable and extreme behavior. Like with Li Xian's thing, I actually think being photographed in a park is not unreasonable. But in contrast with Wang Yipuo's thing, the tracking device, the strange door knocks in the middle of the night, that's not only extreme, it's also illegal and needs to be addressed by the proper authorities. And that's it for this edition guys. This show would not be possible without your support so I thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe and hit that notification button for more updates. 
And if you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, I'll answer one of your questions at the end of one of my episodes. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers! Thank you.